G'day and welcome back to the channel. I'm stuck in the the garden studio, I suppose you'd call it at home, because it's raining again today and I'm busy trying to edit up this video, which everybody's waiting for. Don't worry, I'm working on it. I really am, but I wanted to take a few minutes out because it's time for a rant. Yes, it's time for a rant. Why am I ranting? Because of this man whose bloodied face appeared right across the world's media about this time last year. And here's the wreckage of his microlite upturned in a field here in New Zealand. And why was he all over the news? Well, watch this video and find out. Okay, this man is Mr. Rod Vaughan. He is what we've, he's been called a veteran reporter. And he, he was flying his microlite here in New Zealand and he claimed that it was struck by a drone which smashed the windscreen and caused him to crash into a field. And the news media ran with this. They really did. They thought this was great because it was the first instance of a drone bringing down a manned aircraft. And that's sort of a milestone they'd been waiting for. And there were headlines like, only an accident waiting to happen. You know, that's sort of like the only a matter of time. Accident waiting to happen. That was one of the headlines that, that was spread around the world. And then we had other headlines such as, Rod Vaughan rushed to hospital after drone crashed into plane. And pilot and son miraculously survive after drone collides with plane. Um, you know, so you might think, well, where was the evidence of this? And in fact, to be fair, to be fair, because I always try to be fair and balanced, some of the news media did take a little step back from that. And they simply reported that the pilot had claimed to be hit by a drone. We had headlines that says, pilot says drone likely cause in plane crash. Doesn't actually say there was a drone hitting a plane, just a likely cause. Another one says, Veteran TV reporter says drone probably hit his plane, and then drone may have caused plane crash. Drone likely caused a crash. So there was this inference though, there was this massive inference that in this particular case, a drone had brought down an aircraft containing Mr. Vaughan and his son, and it was lucky they weren't killed. Look at the bloodied face, my goodness. Um, so it ruined his looks for life. Um, so this was a case of the media just jumping on a bandwagon, and it was a case of fake news. And the media, the mainstream media, television, newspapers, radio, they're very quick to condemn social media as being a major purveyor of fake news because social media is their competitor these days. A lot of people now go to Facebook or YouTube or whatever to get their news because they don't trust the mainstream media. They don't trust CNN or Fox News or, or BBC because they have learned from bitter experience that most of these organizations have some kind of agenda. They lean left, they lean right. They have a reason to give you information that might not be totally accurate. And in this drone story, we have amazing evidence to that. And the, the reason I say that is because shortly after this story hit the news, I did my own investigation. Now, as I've said in a previous video, I was very closely involved in the news industry 20 odd years ago. I was the operator of the world's most widely syndicated web-based news service. We covered news from all over the world. We had reporters in many countries. We were the first news site in the world to broadcast the first Mars rover footage as it landed on Mars. Clever technology. We also were the first news site to report when the US started bombing um, Iraq. I think it was, or Kuwait, one of the two, I can't remember, so long ago. Anyway, we broke a lot of news stories and I was there. I was the initial, I was the managing editor and the reporters I had there, I vetted their stories very carefully because I believe in the journalistic basics. You know, facts must be corroborated. You must have multiple sources of evidence before you publish something as fact. And you always provide balance. You know, you don't just take someone's word for stuff. You find other inputs to give some kind of balance to a story. Those things have long gone, long gone in our mainstream media. And this story, this story of Rod Vaughan and his microlight crash, are the perfect example of that. So I did some investigative journalism and I found that the aircraft concerned was subject to a recall on the door latches. The door latches were faulty on some of these aircraft. So I did a video and also heard through the grapevine, because New Zealand's a very small community, that the windscreen on this particular aircraft was scheduled for replacement. A replacement had been ordered, apparently. So I was told. So you would think, well, hang on a minute, let's put two and two together. If the door latch could have been faulty, and the windscreen could have been faulty to the extent that it needed replacing, then this was more likely to be just a spontaneous failure of the windscreen. It caused maybe the door lock popped, which reduced the cabin pressure, which then caused the outside prop wash to blow in the windscreen, causing Mr. Vaughan to look like this. That was my theory at the time. I presented this through a video, which I've linked in the description of this one, and I also presented it to the mainstream media as 
an alternative explanation for what had happened to Mr. Vaughan, and I suggested that they provide some balance by looking at the other options and don't just take his word as gospel because even he admitted he hadn't seen a drone, but it was probably a drone. Um, and of course, the mainstream media, they didn't want a bean of what I'd suggested because it didn't fit the, it, it didn't fit their agenda of vilifying drones and just creating sensationalist twaddle. So here we are a year later on. And why am I making this video today? Well, last Friday, Friday was about three, three days ago, the CIA in New Zealand, who are the airspace regulator, like the FAA or CASA or Transport Canada, they released their incident report on this particular crash. So they've investigated it. And that, that report, I'll paraphrase, but I've also linked it in the description below. That report basically says there was no drone. There was no drone. They checked. There was no sign of a drone, no sign of a damage caused by drone. What they did find was that the windscreen had been significantly damaged by ultraviolet light because most plastics, most polymers from which these windscreens are made, they degrade when exposed to ultraviolet light. And if you're flying an aircraft, generally speaking, you're going to be doing it outside. And outside you have ultraviolet light from the sun. Even on a cloudy day, you get ultraviolet light. So over time, these windscreens degrade. They get little tiny hairline cracks. They turn yellow and you have to replace them or they break. So this, uh, as I say, I was told in good faith that this windscreen was due for replacement, that it had been scheduled for replacement. And uh, so that's why I made my video. Now, CAA have confirmed this. They've confirmed that the windscreen was faulty and that the cause of the crash was almost certainly just a spontaneous structural failure, which is what I suggested after my investigation. And the mainstream media ignored it in favor of the drone brings down airplane explanation. So now we've proven that the mainstream media were just full of fake news. The stuff they presented is more or less as fact was completely flawed and that me, no longer a professional journalist, no longer a, an investigative reporter, I did their job for them and they still ignored the evidence that I presented them in favor of fake news. But now we have an interesting situation where we can really put them to the test because now they know it wasn't a drone. But will they correct the story that they published earlier? Because in publishing this drone brings down airplane, they effectively uh, defamed, virtually defamed every drone owner in the world, every drone operator in the world, because they, the public thought, oh, drones are dangerous. They've brought down an airplane. People could have died. Uh, so they've impugned the good reputation of drone flyers through this fake news. They need to correct that. They need to correct that because as of this moment in time, a drone has never caused the crash of a manned aircraft. So the public has a false impression as a result of these earlier news stories. So I am challenging the mainstream media to do the right thing. Put your ethics into play. Put the balance into play. Publish the story that says we were wrong. This aircraft was not hit by a drone. We apologize for misleading the public by suggesting or even inferring that it was. Now, do you think we will see that story ever published? I don't think we will. Here in New Zealand, I've contacted all the news sources, most of the news sources that carried these crazy headlines in this country and pointed them to the CAA report and suggested to them that they republish a correction, a story that actually tells the truth. One news so source at the moment as of this point in time, has done so. But they've done so without really admitting that they had any part in disseminating the fake news. Oh no, they've just reported on the, the situation now. There's no, we apologize, there's no, um, you know, the world was misled, Nothing, none of that stuff. Because naturally, it's a very competitive business. News sources want to play down their involvement in the proliferation of fake news, which is what they're doing. So I suggest that this is probably the best we're going to get, just simply publishing the fact that it wasn't a drone without any reference to their prior fake news reports. And I suspect a lot of news sites just won't publish anything in case people join the dots and go, hang on a minute, a year ago you told us this was a drone incident. A lot of them will just ignore it. The, the, the Daily Mail probably <laughs> won't say anything because they're just full of shite. Anyway, so my challenge is to the news media. You plastered your pages with this story. You made an obscene amount of money by getting eyeballs on web pages, ears on radio broadcasts, and, and, and faces on screens looking at advertisers' messages, you turned this into a huge moneymaker. Now, it's time to repay that debt. It's time to say, we have done a wrong to drone operators, drone owners, by suggesting through inference that they're irresponsible and could bring down an airplane, or had brought down an airplane. 
So now's the time to put that right. Let's see you give as much exposure to this story, which admits that Mr. Vaughan was wrong and you guys were wrong. Let's see you do that. I don't, it's not going to happen, but it, it speaks to the integrity of the mainstream news media. And it, it proves that it's all about fake news, not about fact. And if that's what they're doing with drone stories, what are they doing to political stories, to other stories, which we don't have the necessary knowledge or understanding to realize what's fake and what's not. You cannot trust the mainstream media anymore. It's just turned into a big money-making machine and they'll do anything to turn a dollar. So news, I think that should be stricken from the name of these organizations, unless you put fake ahead of it. You're more likely to get accurate reporting from social media, honestly. Look, I try and give you the facts, the unadorned facts, and I think I'm doing a damn sight better job when it comes to drone stories than the mainstream media ever did. But none of them are prepared to talk to me. None of them are prepared to um, question me when they've got issues they want resolved. They don't come to me because why not? I don't fit there. I don't sing from their hymn book. I'm not into the tabloid sensationalist stuff. There we go. Now, there's one other party that needs to stand up and apologize. And that, of course, is Mr. Rod Vaughan. He... He insulted every drone owner in the world by suggesting that a drone had caused the crash of his aircraft without any evidence, without anything but a, just a belief, a belief without any substantiating evidence at any stage of this whole thing. He never saw a drone. There was never any drone damage. There was never any parts of drones found. Yet he was adamant this was caused by a drone. So he insulted and he defamed the entire drone community worldwide by becoming the first man in the world to be flying an aircraft that was brought down by a recreational drone. Now, that is atrocious. Now, this is supposedly a veteran reporter, a journalist of long standing. He, if, if anybody, should know that you don't make news through supposition. You don't make news by assuming something or, or probable. You want facts. You want confirmation. You want multiple sources of evidence to back up your claims. He had none of that. He had the thinnest veneer of he thought. And that's not good enough. And the damage he's done to the drone community is immense. It is immense because the public perception was so skewed by the story. Drone brings down aeroplane. Oh my goodness, these are so dangerous. We must register them. We must restrict them. We must, you know, whatever. And so we've, since then, of course, we've seen registration coming into Canada, registration coming into Australia. It's going to come into Switzerland very soon. It's probably going to come in in New Zealand. And the people making these decisions have been driven by this fake news. They see, oh, a drone has brought down an aeroplane. A, a, a well-known reporter, his plane was brought down by a drone. We need to do more to control these craft. And it's, to use my, excuse my French, it's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. That never happened. So Mr. Vaughan needs to stand up and he needs to go before the radio, the newspapers, the um, online media, and even do a YouTube video of your own, Rod and say, I apologize. I apologize for the inference that I've brought on the drone community. I apologize for, for casting aspersions on the integrity of the drone community. It's just not good enough. It's nothing a reporter or a journalist would ever do. And I think if he won't do that, then he should not use reporter or journalist, even in retrospect, in connection with his name, because he's none. He's not. If you can't do that, I would not call him a reporter. I would not call him a journalist, because he is forsaking the very basic tenets of the fourth estate, which he was claiming to be a member of. There you go. Now, I'm not going to make cast aspersions on Mr. Vaughan's character. I would like to see him. I'd love to think that he'll front up like a man and say, I'm taking it on the chin. I'm sorry, guys. I really screwed up. Please accept my apology. I don't know if that'll happen or not. I think he will be judged on what he does or does not do from this point forward. And I think the drone community has every right to judge him harshly if he doesn't tender an apology. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below where YouTube has conveniently provided a space for you to do so. And I'd like to thank my supporters because I can bring you the real news, the honest news. Uh, I'm not driven by having to make a buck out of sensationalist clickbait headlines. Maybe I should try that. No. Anyway, so thank you for my Patreon supporters and thank you to the people who click on the generic affiliate link in my description, which takes you off to Banggood where you can buy lots of wonderful stuff. And I'm not going to tell you what to buy, but if you do buy it after clicking on that link, then I get some tiny coin which goes into helping me make videos like this, like this, and to uh, make sure that you're properly informed. There you go. That's it for another rant. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. 
Rod Vaughan and all the editors all over the world of newspapers and radio broadcasts and television broadcasts and websites carrying fake news can give me a big thumbs down because I've caught you out. And now the world will judge you on how you respond to being caught out. It's up to you guys. Go for it. Bye for now.